Hi guys, it's Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft with a little bit of an update on the Percussion Revolver series. Now first off guys, I would like to thank you for your response that I've had in this series. I've really enjoyed working and talking with y'all about the, about the Percussion Revolvers and bringing my knowledge to you has been very well received. Now seriously, thank you for that and thank you for all the support and the likes and shares and where you've taken this and handed it off to other people as answering their questions. I do greatly appreciate that. Now, let's start with an, to answer a question for one of my followers. One of my followers said that they're having trouble with getting the cylinder in and out of a 58 Remington. So you gotta understand a little bit of the mechanics here. Okay, this is an unloaded 58 Remington copy. When you go to the half cock position, the cylinder freely rotates, you drop down, pull out, and out comes the cylinder, okay? The hand does protrude just a grunt where it leans forward out of that window, unlike the Colt. So when you're trying to slide the cylinder in, because the cylinder is a very tight fit front to back, that's a tolerance thing, it's hitting that thumb of that hand sticking out. So the correct way to put the cylinder in is like this. You want to come in from this side of the, of the gun. You want to sit it up in there like that and then give it a little twist in this direction, just like that. Then put in your base pin. You notice I turn it with my thumbs, I slide in my base pin. What you're doing there is the edge of the cylinder rotates and picks that finger of the hand up and out of the way and allows the cylinder to slide in place. A lot of people will go to just try to slide it straight in and it's grabbing the end of the hand, that little nub. And when you look there, it isn't automatically obvious what's wrong, but the cylinder fits top to bottom flush between those two points. And that's one of the things, okay? Hope that answers your question. Next. Finally, after nearly a year, I'm going to get to be able to do a shooting, uh, a shooting video for you on the Johnson and Dow bullet. Now, as you remember, I got this mold last year from Mark Hubs of Era's Gone Bullet Molds, and it is for the 45, it's actually 44, um, Johnson and Dow Civil War bullet. This is a copy of an original type bullet that was used during the Civil War. The hard part for me was getting the supply of lead because these big bullets need to be made out of pure lead and everything I had was hard alloys because of more modern guns. And so I kept trying to find a local source of the lead that wasn't gonna cost an arm and a leg to get. And I finally have found a source of the lead. So I've been able to cast a good supply of these Johnson and Dow bullets for you. Now the Johnson & Dow bullet is a healed bullet with a very good point on it. It's got this ring right there going around the bullet and this shaft on the bullet. Now what that shaft does is to aid in loading. As you see the cylinder here, it allows you to sit the bullet and it sits just like that, and then that ring fits on the outside. That's what, when we compress, that ring is gonna be sheared off to form the donut, thus making the good seal. But that shaft goes into the cylinder to make sure it's vertical in the correct position. My Remington, which is a Pieta, doesn't have to be modified at all to take these bullets. I just have to drop it in and kinda of thumb click it around till it lines up underneath. It doesn't cause any trouble. Some guns may have to have a little bit of clearance adjusted right here at the edge of the rammer where it's wanting to go around that corner and that point may be a little too far out. So that's coming extremely soon. Possibly in the next day, I'll get to go out and do some shooting with that. I'm gonna be shooting off of a rest at a target to get you an idea. Now I have cast these bullets. As I've mentioned in my earlier videos, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take that bullet, I'm gonna put it in a little bitty tub and I'm gonna add some liquid Alox from Lee Precision, give it a good swirl to coat the bullets. I have found that is a big aid in 
lubrication of these cap and ball revolver bullets. Now, the next announcement is one of my su subscribers contacted me and very generously supplied me with a quantity of Kato Ojama's 36 caliber bullet to try in my 61 Navy. Right here. Now these have already been coated in that liquid allox. Now these 36 calibers like that, as you can see, they're flat ended. And are very much like what we would call a Keith bullet from back in the day. Elmer Keith, one of the, if you know anything about the 44s and stuff like and big bore guns in the 20th century, you know the name Elmer Keith. Elmer Keith developed a bullet that he found was very effective on game and at target and etc. And it's this flat nosed conical shape like that. I have used Keith bullets many times in 44 and 45 caliber guns. And I've always wanted to try one in a cap and ball, so I'm very excited about this. But I now have a good supply of these, and that will also be coming in the next shooting video. So, to answer the question, yes, we are. We're still going to be shooting the cap and balls. we got lots more to do. Um, I've talked to several people about various things that they want to see done. I'm going to be doing more of the shooting video where you're going to see the Johnson & Dow on paper out of the Remington. You're going to see the Johnson & Dow in the board penetration test. You're going to see the Kato Ojama 36 caliber bullet in the 61 Navy being used on paper and on a board penetration test. That's where we're going right now. If there's something you would like to see, please leave it in the question or comments. I'll try to work it in. Again, guys, thank you so much for the support. And I hope that in the future there will be even more videos. And I hope that in the future these videos will ultimately help you with your questions and in some way pass on a little bit of my knowledge to you. Thanks, guys, for everything y'all do. Till next time, I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.